Okay, on this one, I want to show you what I'm going to show you first. So this is a, uh, a bulkhead of sorts. Um, and so, it, you know, it's not all really complete, but it's a start. So if I drag this, I've actually got animated a little bit too, and we can uh, maybe fit that into this 10-minute video. Let's see how it goes. So that's what I'm going to shoot for. Let's just do it from scratch. So I'll do a uh, reset. And uh, I think I'll start this in the front view with a box. So, and I'm not worried about size right now. I'm just going to get something that's close. And I'm just going to draw a box in the front view. And uh, with this box, we need a texture to go on it. So let's do that. Now I should probably show it to you this way. Um, Photoshop. Let me bring Photoshop in for a second. Okay, I just want to talk a little bit about what I'm going to use for my texture. Now, here is a... This is it. This is it. I'm going to do it this way. Okay, we'll use this. This is what I'm going to use for my door. Okay, so you can see that it's not perfect. There's a little bit of an angle here, and that will affect our end result. So why don't we fix this? Let me just go to Image, Duplicate, and we'll work with this one. And uh, first thing I need to do is bring my toolbar in, and let's just crop this. Or actually, we can just make this a little bit bigger so we can tweak it a little bit. So I'm going to go to Edit, Uh, let me check my layers here for a second. I'm going to double click my background layer and hit OK. So it should give me edit, edit capability. And I'm going to go to Transform and let's use Distort. So I can take Distort and I can drag these points around and play with them. And what I want to do is to make the top line as horizontal as possible. might help if you turn on grid. I'm not going to worry about that right now. And let's drag this bottom line around until the bottom edge is as horizontal as possible and the left edge is as vertical as possible. And I won't worry, trust about it too much right now. Let's say that's good. I'll hit the move key to kind of reset and apply. So I apply the transformation. Now I'm going to go to my crop tool here and just crop this out nice and tight. And I can see I got a little bit of a problem on the right side. It's not exactly vertical, but in the interest of doing a short demo, I'm going to skip that. I'm going to right click, hit crop. That's close enough for our purposes today. I'm going to do a file save as and put that on one of my uh, folders. And you can't see what I'm doing right now, but I'm just saving this. I'm going to call this uh, BH door for bulkhead door. And we'll give it a value of like 8. Okay, so that's good. Now we can get rid of Photoshop for a minute. And uh, now let's put the material on the door and see how it looks. So I'm going to go to uh, M for material. Put my first material. Call it BHD for bulkhead door. I'm going to click on diffuse, the little button to the right of diffuse, or, well that's what I'm going to click on. And then I'm going to go to, on my material browser, I'm going to double click bitmap. And I'm going to go find the bulkhead folder, BH door, open. Now this is selected, correct? So I'm going to go to my Apply Material to Selection button, third button over, and I'm going to click the little checked box that says Show Map in Viewport. And we'll close the materials because we're done with it for now. And on any of these viewports, I can right-click and go to Smooth plus Highlights, and I can see how it looks. And it's not too bad. 
maybe I don't have time to build the you know the, the handles for this door and I just got to build something real fast so that's the scenario but let's look at this for a second let's uh, go to this viewport and just maximize it for a second by hitting the button in the corner and if you zoom in you can see this is a curved door and yet the uh, model we have is just a rectangle so it's not really a great fit it doesn't look as believable so maybe we have we can take a few minutes and just improve the look of this uh, model so I'm gonna right click this model and convert to editable poly and I'm gonna go to vertex sub object mode and I'm going to um, well there's a few ways to do this I'm going to show you two ways. Let me let me build another door so I have something to work with here. What if you want to do the box from scratch and you know what you want it to look like? Build the box, go up here under parameters, and for length and height segments, you're going to have to change these values. Now let me go to my front viewport name here and click on edged faces so I can see the edges. And I'm going to increase the number of edges for length and width. And now I'm going to right click that door and convert to editable poly. And I'm going to go into vertex sub object mode here. Or you can do it here if you want. And then I'm just going to do a press drag release and do it like an implied window around all those vertices. Now I can use my slide the toolbar over, move tool, grabbing the y axis and dragging these vertices right close to the edge. And you'll see why I'm doing this in just a minute. So I want those to go there. I want to grab all this column here of vertices, and move them over there, and move this column of vertices over here. Now I'm just going to zoom in and grab, I'm still in vertex sub object mode. I'm going to grab this section of vertices. Notice that ignore back facing is turned off or it's not activated, which means I can grab this vertex and the vertex that's underneath it. There's actually one underneath it. Can I show you that? Right there. See, it's a thickness. There's two. Anyway, let's go to front view again. Notice that I'm putting a curve on this door's corners by doing this. Just quick and dirty. Putting a curve here. So it's going to fit my texture a little better and my design actually. Now I can turn this vertex sub object mode off now. So this object is selected. I can go to materials and I can throw that material on there and see how that looks. Now whenever you put a material on an object, it's a good idea to have a UVW map on there too. So I'm here on this editable poly. Here's my modifier list. I can go on my modifier list, little down arrow and go way down here to uh, UVW map. And the UVW map I normally pick on something like this is planar. And let's just do an adjustment while we're here. Do we see any problems with this planar map? Not really. For something quick, it's not too bad. But you can, if you need to, adjust the length or the width of that map. 